the end. A discussion later that same day. When Michael finished telling the story, he looked around the room and saw his former classmates smiling at him. Several thanked him and said they got a good deal out of the story. Nathan asked the group, "What would you think of getting together later and maybe discussing it?" Most of them said they would like to talk about it, and so they arranged to meet later for a drink before dinner. That evening, as they gathered in a hotel lounge, they began to kid each other about finding their cheese and seeing themselves in the maze. Then Angela asked the group good-naturedly, "So who are you in the story? Sniff, scurry, hem, or haw?" Carlos answered, "Well, I was thinking about this this afternoon. I clearly remember a time before I had my sporting goods business when I had a rough encounter with change. I wasn't sniff." I didn't sniff out the situation and see the change early, and I certainly wasn't scurry. I didn't go into action immediately. I was more like him, who wanted to stay in familiar territory. The truth is, I didn't want to deal with the change. I didn't even want to see it. Michael, who felt like no time had passed since he and Carlos were close friends in school, asked, "What are we talking about here, buddy?" Carlos said. An unexpected change of jobs. Michael laughed. You were fired. Well, let's just say I didn't want to go out looking for new cheese. I thought I had a good reason why change shouldn't happen to me, so I was pretty upset at the time. Some of their former classmates who had been quiet in the beginning felt more comfortable now and spoke up, including Frank, who had gone into the military. Hem reminds me of a friend of mine. Frank said, "His department was closing down, but he didn't want to see it. They kept relocating his people. We all tried to talk to him about the many other opportunities that existed in the company for those who wanted to be flexible, but he didn't think he had to change. He was the only one who was surprised when his department closed. Now he's having a hard time adjusting to the change he didn't think should happen." Jessica said. I didn't think it should happen to me either, but my cheese has been moved more than once. Many in the group laughed, except Nathan. Maybe that's the whole point, Nathan said. Change happens to all of us. He added, "I wish my family had heard the cheese story before this. Unfortunately, we didn't want to see the changes coming in our business, and now it's too late. We're having to close many of our stores." That surprised many in the group because they thought Nathan was lucky to be in a secure business he could depend on year after year. What happened? Jessica wanted to know. Our chain of small stores suddenly became old-fashioned when the mega store came to town with its huge inventory and low prices. We just couldn't compete with that. I can see now that instead of being like Sniff and Scurry, we were like Hem. We stayed where we were and didn't change. We tried to ignore what was happening, and now we are in trouble. We could have taken a couple of lessons from Haw. Laura, who had become a successful businesswoman, had been listening, but had said very little until now. I thought about the story this afternoon too. She said, "I wondered how I could be more like Haw and see what I'm doing wrong, laugh at myself, change, and do better." She said, "I'm curious. How many here are afraid of change?" No one responded, so she suggested, "How about a show of hands?" Only one hand went up. Well, it looks like we've got one honest person in our group," she said, and then continued, "Maybe you'll like this next question better. How many here think other people are afraid of change? Practically everyone raised their hands. Then they all started laughing. What does that tell us? Denial," Nathan answered. "Sure," Michael admitted. "Sometimes we're not even aware that we're afraid. I know I wasn't. When I first heard the story, I loved the question, 'What would you do if you weren't afraid?'" Then Jessica added, 
Well, what I got from the story is that change is happening everywhere, and that I will do better when I can adjust to it quickly. I remember years ago when our company was selling our encyclopedia as a set of more than twenty books. One person tried to tell us that we should put our whole encyclopedia on a single computer disk and sell it for a fraction of the cost. It would cost us so much less to manufacture, and so many more people could afford it. But we all resisted. Why did you resist? Nathan asked. Because we believed that the backbone of our business was our large sales force, who called on people door to door. Keeping our sales force depended on the big commissions they earned from the high price of our product. We had been doing this successfully for a long time and thought it would go on forever. So you thought your old cheese was your only cheese, Nathan said. Yes, and we wanted to hang on to it. When I think back on what happened to us, I see that it's not just that they moved the cheese, but that the cheese has a life of its own and eventually runs out. Anyway, we didn't change, but a competitor did, and our sales fell badly. We've been going through a difficult time. Now another big technological change is happening in the industry, and no one at the company seems to want to deal with it. It doesn't look good. I think I could be out of a job soon. It's May's time, Carlos called out. Everyone laughed, including Jessica. Carlos turned to Jessica and said, "It's good that you can laugh at yourself." Frank offered, "That's what I got out of the story." I tend to take myself too seriously. I noticed how Haw changed when he could finally laugh at himself and at what he was doing. No wonder he was called Haw. Angela asked, "Do you think that Hem ever changed and found new cheese?" Elaine said, "I think he did." I don't," Corey said. "Some people never change, and they pay a price for it. I see people like Hem in my medical practice. They feel entitled to their cheese." They feel like victims when it's taken away and blame others. They get sicker than people who let go and move on. Then Nathan said quietly, as though he was talking to himself, "I guess the question is, what do we need to let go of, and what do we need to move on to?" No one said anything for a while. I must admit, Nathan said, "I saw what was happening with stores like ours in other parts of the country." But I hoped it wouldn't affect us. I guess it's a lot better to initiate change while you can than it is to try to react and adjust to it. Maybe we should move our own cheese. Nathan added, "I can't help but wonder where we would be today if we had sold the real estate under all our old stores and built a great modern store to compete with the best of them." Laura said, "Maybe that's what Haw meant when he wrote on the wall." Savor the adventure and move with the cheese. Frank said, "I think some things shouldn't change. For example, I want to hold on to my basic values, but I realize now that I would be better off if I had moved with the cheese a lot sooner in my life." Well, Michael, it was a nice little story, Richard the class skeptic said. But how did you actually put it into use in your company? The group didn't know it yet. But Richard was experiencing some changes himself. Recently separated from his wife, he was now trying to balance his career with raising his teenagers. Michael replied, "You know, I thought my job was just to manage the daily problems as they came up when I should have been looking ahead and paying attention to where we were going. And boy, did I manage those problems twenty-four hours a day! I wasn't a lot of fun to be around. I was in a rat race and I couldn't get out." Laura said, "So you were managing when you needed to be leading." Exactly, Michael said. Then, when I heard the story of who moved my cheese, I realized my job was to paint a picture of new cheese that we would want to pursue, so we could enjoy changing and succeeding, whether it was at work or in life. That's interesting, Angela said, because to me the most powerful. Part of the story was when Hall laughed at his fear and painted a picture in his mind where he saw himself enjoying new cheese. It made going into the maze less fearful and more enjoyable, and he eventually got a better deal. Richard, who had been frowning during the discussion, said, "My manager has been telling me our company needs to change. I think what she's really telling me is that I need to." 
but I haven't wanted to hear it. I guess I never really knew what the new cheese was she was trying to move us to, or how I could gain from it. A slight grin crossed Richard's face as he said, I must admit I like this idea of seeing new cheese and imagining yourself enjoying it. It lightens everything up. When you see how it can make things better, you get more interested in making the change happen. Maybe I could use this in my personal life, he added. My children seem to think that nothing in their lives should ever change. They're angry. I guess they're acting like him. They're angry. Maybe I haven't painted a realistic picture of new cheese for them. Probably because I don't see it myself. The group was quiet as several people thought about their own lives. Well, Jessica said, most people here are talking about jobs, but as I listened to the story, I thought about my personal life. I think my current relationship is old cheese that has some pretty serious mold on it. Corey laughed in agreement. Me too. I probably need to let go of a bad relationship. Angela countered, Or perhaps the old cheese is just old behavior. What we really need to let go of is the behavior that keeps causing our bad relationship, and then move on to a better way of thinking and acting. Ouch, Corey reacted. Good point. The new cheese is a new relationship with the same person. Richard said, I'm beginning to think there is more to this than I thought. I like the idea of letting go of old behavior instead of letting go of the relationship. Repeating the same behavior will just get you the same results. As far as work goes, maybe instead of changing jobs, I should be changing the way I'm doing my job. I'd probably have a better job by now if I did. Then Becky, who lived in another city but had returned for the reunion, said, as I was listening to the story and to everyone's comments here, I've had to laugh at myself. I've been like him for so long, hemming and hawing and afraid of change. I didn't realize how many other people did this as well. I'm afraid I've passed it on to my children without even knowing it. As I think about it, I realize change really can lead you to a new and better place, although you're afraid it won't at the time. I remember a time when our son was a sophomore in high school. My husband's job required us to move from Illinois to Vermont, and our son was upset because he had to leave his friends. He was a star swimmer, and the high school in Vermont had no swim team, so he was angry with us for making him move. As it turned out, he fell in love with the Vermont mountains, took up skiing, skied on his college team, and now lives happily in Colorado. If we had all enjoyed this cheese story together over a cup of hot chocolate, we could have saved our family a lot of stress. Jessica said, I'm going home to tell my family this story. I'll ask my children who they think I am, sniff, scurry, hem, or haw, and who they feel they are. We could talk about what we feel our family's old cheese is and what the new cheese could be. Frank then commented, I think I'm going to be more like Haw and move with the cheese and enjoy it. And I'm going to pass this story along to my friends who are worried about leaving the military and what the change will mean to them. It could lead to some interesting discussions. Michael said, That's how we improved our business. We had several discussions about what we got from the cheese story and how we could apply it to our own situation. It was great because we had language that was fun for us to use to talk about how we were dealing with change. It was very effective, especially as it spread deeper into the company. What do you mean by deeper? Nathan asked. The further we went into our organization, the more people we found who felt they had less power. They were understandably more afraid of what the change might do to them, so they resisted. When the cheese story was shared with everyone in our organization, the people who had been resisting saw the advantage of changing. They even helped bring about the change. We also passed the story along to people we wanted to do business with. Then we suggested we might be their new cheese. It led to some new business. That gave Jessica several ideas and reminded her that she had some early sales calls in the morning. She looked at her watch and said, well, it's time for me to leave this cheese station and find some new cheese. The group laughed. 
Many of them wanted to continue the conversation, but they needed to go. As they left, they thanked Michael again. He said, I'm very glad you found the story so useful, and I hope that you will have the opportunity to share it with others. Who Moved My Cheese? An amazing way to deal with change in your work and in your life was written by Dr. Spencer Johnson and read by Tony Roberts and Patty Pelican. The recording engineer was Rick Bradley, with editing by David Gorin and post-production by Michael Jones. The production coordinator was William Carlino. Who Moved My Cheese was produced and directed by Karen Frillman. This has been a presentation of Simon & Schuster Audio. Also available from Simon & Schuster Audio, The One Minute Manager by Dr. Spencer Johnson and Kenneth Blanchard, Ph.D.